Hello, I'm Emma Gray. I'm a critical care paramedic at Thames Valley Air Ambulance. I'm here today to tell you about all of the equipment that we carry on all of our vehicles, including the aircraft as well as our response cars. So these two are our main uh, response bags um, and this one we call our primary response bag. Um, we carry a lot of equipment in these bags um, and they're actually they're quite heavy, they're at least 15 kilograms. In the top we carry our drugs and this is our most frequently used drugs bag. This is our major trauma pouch or our major hemorrhage control pouch. Um, so we know that if, if we're turning up to an incident that is quite an obvious major trauma uh, this is a bag that we definitely want to have so the equipment that we have in here we have a pelvic binder so if we suspect somebody has a fractured pelvis and um, we put this onto them this will help stop the bleeding and um, we also have traction splints so that's if you fracture the femur the main large thigh bone in the body and um, by strength straightening out that limb um, it relieves the pain and also it helps to the recovery of the tissues a lot quicker as well as stopping any potential catastrophic bleeding that's going on in there. So we have some really good bandages in here. They're really uh, strong and powerful bandages and these are actually um, have come from the military. So these were devised and utilised in places like Afghanistan and Iraq and, and worked very well out there with the casualties. Um, and so they are the ones that we now use. Um, here we have Celox, and again, this is something that's come from the military as well. Um, so this is a hemostatic gauze. Uh, if you have a large open wound or penetrating wound and it's, you're still continuing to bleed through, um, we can use this to put inside the wound uh, and the properties that are in it help to clot the blood uh, and stop the bleeding. These are Russell chest seals. So this is if somebody had a penetrating wound to the chest, um, maybe a stab wound. Um, this is put over that wound um, and it allows some air to be released from the lungs, um, but obviously uh, it stops you from drawing extra air in um, that would cause you a lot of um, problems. We've got clear view dressings. So if we have a wound that we really need to keep an eye on, we can put a dressing on, um, but then we can also see what's happening with that wound. Um, and here we've got tourniquets. So should somebody have a partially or a fully amputated limb, um, there's a chance that they could catastrophically bleed from that limb. We use the tourniquets uh, to stop that from happening. We have um, what we call cannulation equipment. So when people need, we need to gain IV access into a vein um, and that's to give them blood or fluid or drugs. Um, that's the equipment we use for that. We have a small bottle of oxygen, which I think is what adds to the weight of this bag, but it's extremely useful to always have some oxygen with us. And this is our, what we call a BVM. So this is if somebody has stopped breathing or we need to assist their breathing, then we can help them with this. Uh, this is another drugs bag. This is our control drugs that are kept in here. So this, the things that are in here are things like um, pain relief for significant levels of pain. And then we've also got the drugs that we would utilize if somebody needed a general anesthetic. What's really important when you've got a casualty um, who's had a traumatic injury is to keep them warm. And especially when everybody else around them is working very hard, you can feel warm, but the patient's getting cold very quickly. So for that, we have a foil blanket that we utilize to keep them warm. And then also, this is brilliant, this is a quick warming blanket. So we take this out of the packet, it's a one use item. Um, we shake it to activate um, the things that are inside and then that starts to heat up and it actively warms the patient. This is a very small pouch, but it holds some very helpful equipment in it. It's our surgical pouch. So things that we could use this for is, for example, if somebody um, had a collapsed lung um, and that was starting to get worse, potentially tension, um, obviously that can be fatal. So we can carry out small surgical procedures um, into the side of the chest wall um, to release that additional air and allow the lung to reinflate. Um, there's equipment in here that can help um, if somebody had a stab wound to the heart um, and they, it was going to be a fatal stab wound, the patient had just gone into cardiac arrest, then there's equipment in here to be able to perform open heart surgery. Um, and that's what's called a thoracotomy. There's also, we would utilise equipment in here if we had a heavily pregnant lady 
who was in cardiac arrest and we had to deliver the baby. That is also all kept in this little pouch. Other equipment in here, we've got our basic airway adjuncts that we utilise to help uh, when a patient has stopped breathing and or needs assistance with just maintaining their airway. Nebulizer mass if somebody's having a significant uh, anaphylactic reaction or um, a significant asthma attack. We've got an IO access pouch, so if we can't get access or if we need to very rapidly get access um, to be able to give the patient blood, fluids or drugs, um, then this is like a little drill that goes into the bone and we can die it works very, very quickly and we can give those things directly into the bone. And here's just a um, basic dressings pouch as well that uh, assists us with the other equipment that we carry.